Hi, it's uh, Dale Weber from the Elmira Service Department, mobile service technician. Beside me, I got Josh Thring. He's a uh, mobile service as well. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, general tips and tricks on, uh, on this uh, S670. Just stuff to check before we go to the field and uh, optimize your combine when it's ready for harvest. We'll move over to the feeder house area for, uh, to start with. So in front of me here we have a five-speed feeder house. This feeder house is, uh, or feeder house drive is for the, uh, for the higher torque with uh, larger chopper heads. The other style is a little bit more maintenance involved. There's a variable shiv right here. I'm sure you've all seen that. Up here there's also variable shivs in here. So the grease fittings in behind here, they do, uh, there's, there's one a leading and a trailing I'm gonna call them. The leading one gets a little bit more grease than the trailing one. So when you're filling those up, I'm gonna say it's kind of a daily grease fitting to grease. Just make sure that the one that's trailing gets less because it's a slide and also the, the leading one gets a little more, it fills the cavity. The one up here, it'll be a grease fitting at 12 o'clock and two o'clock is how I position them to grease them. 12 o'clock, you have lunch, you give that one a little bit more. Two o'clock, you have snack. Just one way to remember to get a little bit more grease at 12 than two o'clock. The only other thing on this here is when you grease them and you have the multi-coupler hooked up on a flex head, obviously this here isn't gonna move the shivs. So what you should do is uncouple the multi-coupler on your flex head and just cycle the grease, uh, or sorry, cycle the shivs in and out just to make sure you get the grease on the slide and you don't get it, uh, a little bit of, a, of it wearing on the, uh, on the inner shiv. So it'll keep it just from, from wearing out prematurely and you'll get uh, better life out of your upper and lower shivs. The only other thing with this multi-coupler is, especially in beans, just make sure that this area here is blown out before you couple both this and the mating surface together. That way it helps uh, save these cartridges in here and uh, you won't have premature leaks on the, uh, the multi-coupler. As far as that goes for this area, the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, just optimizing in high moisture corn. So this area here, we have, uh, well, we got the feeder house floor. We're gonna be talking about, um, well, basically how to optimize for, for high moisture corn and also for, for the stainless floor I'll talk about first. We have a template that we can stick in there if the floor gets thin and then we can stick the stainless floor in there and it just bolts down and it has a better life than the, uh, then, uh, well, I guess once the original one is wore out, then uh, you take the front plate off here, we can stick the template in, drill holes, and then we just put the stainless floor in there, put this back on top, and we've had very good luck with, uh, well, just with the stainless floor, and uh, seems to wear better and, and slides in there. The uh, feeder hose chain is the next thing. As you can see this one here, the, the leading edge is, is uh, flat and the serrated edge is, is trailing. So that just helps for less fines in corn. You pull the chain out, you put it in the opposite way that it was in originally, and it just helps with, with the fines for the corn is one way to optimize it. The only other thing on the reverser over here is uh, I like to change the reverse oil once a year. Just keeps uh, just keeps uh, basically keeping good oil in there. It gets high temperatures of heat in there and there's a special synthetic oil that we put in there that we can, the parts department can help you out with that. So a couple other things for optimizing for high moisture corn. Up in this area we have the, uh, when the concaves are removed, there is uh, the rotor feed flights in there and we have hard surfaced them. If the hard surface is uh, worn back, we just need to make sure that the, that the hard surface is done, that it's got a nice smooth bead on it. Too many times, or what can happen, I guess, is if, if, there's, if there's, uh, there's too much of a sharp edge on there, it helps, uh, well, it's more like a, it grinds up the corn. So as long as there's a nice smooth edge on that hard surface, that'll help uh, for, uh, for less crop damage. 
Also on the feed accelerator in the front, the, the feed accelerator that pushes it into the, the feed flights, those ones there, there's a couple different options we can get for those. One of the options, well, you have your uh, regular serrated. That one there we like to change before wheat. That way when you do wheat and soybeans, by the time we get to corn, then there'll be a little bit of a rounded edge on there and also it'll be smoother transition and less uh, crop damage feeding into the rotor. The next thing here is uh, up here we have some uh, separator grade spacers. As you can see, those are in the installed position. So in this case here, we'd be set up for corn. Those should be taken out for wheat. And uh, for soybeans, normally they stay out as well. The only thing that, that can be done is you can stagger them. So you'd leave the first one in, the next one you take out, and the next one in. And what that gets you is a little bit of a staggered, uh, just a stepping action, keeps it in the, in the rotor just a little bit longer and helps with, uh, well, it just helps with moving the crop in there and, and helps separate a little better. As far as uh, other things for high moisture corn, the, the vertical auger, the horizontal auger, make sure that there's no sharp auger flighting, that it doesn't uh, damage the crop that way. And uh, basically, yeah, just keep everything um, flowing as smoothly as possible. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, just at the back here as far as, um, as keeping the engine bay and that clean. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about uh, how to reduce the, the cause of a fire hazard up in the engine bay. When you're uh, windrowing wheat, sometimes we have a lot of chaff, it's a really dry year. There's a, a potential to get a lot of uh, chaff up in the engine bay. So a couple of things we can do for that is uh, there is, well basically when the, when the chopper is up, we can get you a, a little plate that sits in there and it just keep, prevents the chaff from blowing up underneath the, uh, the engine bay and, and it just fills up under the, en under the engine oil pan. So between the plate and the, uh, while well, the chopper's gonna be up, the plate goes in there. Basically when you're done windrowing, the plate comes out, chopper goes back down. The only other thing is uh, just as, a, as a, a check in the morning before you go to harvest your wheat, we are going to uh, just have a look up in this area up in here. There's a little cutout hole up in that area and basically the engine fan just pushes the debris across to this side and we just don't want to, or we want to make sure there's no chaff sitting on this side and uh, we'll just clean that area all out and then we should, uh, we'll have, we know that area is clean and it'll keep us from uh, having the potential of a fire hazard in that area. And the other thing is, I guess over on this side over here, the vacuum fan, the hole in there, that vacuum fan just blows back in here. And with the chopper up and the chaff sits in this area, it has the potential to blow up underneath the engine oil pan as well. We can take this pipe off over here, this one here, and basically when we take that pipe off and just let the, the vacuum fan blow back, just straight out the back is fine and it won't swirl up the back into the, uh, the uh, engine oil pan and just basically just keep that area clean. That way we know we can, uh, we can go to the field and there won't be any issues that way. So before we move over to the right hand side, I wanna mention the uh, reel pump in behind here. The way to check that one quickly is just loosen this drive belt off here and then just take hold of the pump there and just, uh, just give it a little bit of a wiggle and uh, that'll tell you if, uh, if the bearings are good in there. And then uh, there's a grease fitting on the front and that one is uh, also important to, to get grease in there. Just uh, keep those reel pump, uh, keep that cavity full in the reel pump. On this one here, as mentioned before, we have a five-speed feeder house on this one. If it had the other style, there would be electric clutch on there. And there's a nut that looks very similar to, to this nut here. And there's a washer. And it's just good to check to make sure that that washer isn't loose. Because if it is, then the taper where the electric clutch sits on is probably wore out. 
and uh, it's best to get that taper hub replaced before we have more damage with the uh, electric clutch. Um, yeah, basically just make sure the nut is tight and then we know, and the washer is not loose and we have, uh, we know everything's tight in that area. The un other thing I'm going to mention is uh, the unloading auger gear case. We've got uh, a bevel gear set there. There is one, uh, there's one grease fitting on there on the uh, older combines and Normally when we rebuild these things, we can take that out and we put greasable bearings in there. That way uh, we seem to have better life with, uh, with a vertical uh, gear case on those bearings. It's a matter of taking those bearings out, putting greasable ones in, putting a short grease hose that down there and it can easily be accessed to grease it. When we're up in that area, if we climb up on the, with the auger swung out, we can check the top splines on the, on the vertical auger and just give the horizontal auger a little bit of a turn and then we can see how much play is on the, on the splines in that gear case and also on the, on the vertical auger. So the only other thing on this uh, kind of has to do with the high moisture corn. When you're uh, combining in less marginal conditions, there's a potential for the, uh, for the cleaning fan housing to hit the cleaning fan if we get snow buildup. The, uh, or one thing to help prevent that, I'll just show you up in here. We have, uh, I have a circle drawn. That is, uh, that is where we can take a hole saw and just cut that a hole out in there. And then uh, we do that on both sides. And then we can just stick an air hose in there. We can take a pressure washer in there. Basically what, uh, where that hole is, it's just in front of the C channel for the shoe and we can just keep that area all cleaned out. That way, that way we, don't, we don't force that debris into, the, into that C channel, which then causes the, the cleaning fan housing just to push into the cleaning fan. So basically we can keep that area clean, we'll reduce that, uh, that risk. One other thing up in, uh, on this left hand side here, the rotor drive shiv we have. There is a grease fitting, I guess it's on the back side there, but what I would like to point out is this plug right here. And uh, this is more of a once a year thing. We take that plug out, we put a grease fitting in there. And the very most important thing is to make sure we have the rotor on high speed, which that means this variable belt here would be all the way out. So the shivs would be all the way together. And then we put grease into this fitting here until it comes out the breather on the far side. There's a little breather there and we'll just put grease in there until we see a little bit of grease come out that breather. Then we know that that cavity is full. And uh, yeah, that's like a, like a once a year thing. But just make sure that this rotor is in high speed is the main thing. And then we'll move over to the other side. So I'm Josh and I'm gonna talk about the chopper here. So with this power cast, you're gonna to wanna to check and make sure your paddles have a nice square edge. As you can see, these are rounded off pretty good farther up. When you get into larger heads, 35, 40, 45 feet, this power cast tailboard won't be able to throw the whole width with these rounded edges. So you wanna make sure the bottom ones as well as the top ones, there's, there's uh, sets up here as well. You wanna make sure they have nice sharp edges and you can also get an aftermarket kit that we sell that'll put a steel cover on here to prevent that from happening as fast. Another thing you wanna check is your chopper hammers in here. You wanna make sure they're all still assembled. You don't want the edges wore off too far. Um, a lot of times they'll crack here and you'll end up missing pieces and you end up with a lot of vibration. So we have a few common grease fittings here that get missed. Um, a lot of these combines get sold with lubricants but the lubricants don't grease spinning grease fittings. So on your tailing slip clutch, you have a grease fitting on the back side. You wanna make sure you grease that well, as well as you wanna make sure you've got a good gap in here. If this outside cast piece is touching your pulley, it's a good chance your drivers are wore and it's time to replace it. But also if you have too big of a gap, there's a good chance it hasn't been greased and it's seized. So you wanna make sure you get that freed up or else you'll be very hard on belts. Uh, the next one here is your fan shiv. You've got two grease fittings here. One is for your slide, the inner one, and the outer one greases your bearing here. And you also have one down on this pulley here. 
so it greases the slide as well whenever you actuate the fan. So you want to make sure it gets greased or else your uh, belt won't be running very well. So you have these chaffer drive arms here as well as sieve arms farther back. You're going to want to make sure the bushings in here are in good shape. With the S-Series with such a large cleaning capacity, you have a lot of weight on those bushings. So you want to make sure that they're nice and tight and not separating. As well as you want to make sure all of your crop is out of here, especially in wheat and beans, it likes to get packed in. Um, both sides, the other side is a shield you have to take off to make sure it's clean. If it starts packing in there too aggressively, then you can lead to breaking arms, which it's not a quick and easy job to fix. So just a bit of preventative maintenance helps prevent that. So along with cleaning out the engine out, um, you're going to want to make sure your rod and intercooler are good and clean. Um, with wheat and especially beans, this, the dust gets packed in there really tight. So you want to make sure you go and blow it out and make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, prevent overheating as well as uh, intercooler getting too hot. Up in the engine bay, I've got one more thing I want to show you. The very cool fan on the 660 and 670s, you have the shivs here. You're going to want to make sure you grease them. I would say one or two shots of synthetic grease in season every once a week or so. Um, you don't want to over grease them because it can hydro lock, but also not enough grease can cause wear to the shivs and the fan won't be able to speed up and slow down as it needs to. So we're going to check uh, chain tension on the elevators. Um, it's a fairly frequent check. Uh, you just want to make sure you can pull the, the sprockets or the g chain side to side, but you don't want to be able to pull the roller off such as this. So just keep those snug, both the clean grain and the tailings, and it will really help prolong the chain life. So two last things here. We're going to talk about the SDS combine clearance gauge. So this tool you can get at your local parts department. You can use it to check your threshing elements, as well as your tine height, round bar concaves, and wire concaves. Uh, this piece of paper comes with them whenever you buy them, so it helps explain how to use it and uh, what the wear limits are. And the other thing is, is up in the grain bin in your loading auger gear case, we have an updated driver which has this nice little seal on the outside here that helps keep crop out of your seal on your gear case and it should help prolong the life of it. Um, it's a fairly inexpensive upgrade and it can definitely help the gear, cast, or gear case last. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you took away some information here. If you have any more questions, you can contact your local service department and uh, we'll be happy to help.